All right, guys, so I am going to kind of give you a little bit of details in regards to taking a, pe a blah, blah, taking a test with Pearson. If you've never taken a test with Pearson before, then it can kind of be a little bit weird at first. So just to kind of make sure that you are on the right track, let's go through this. So I'm going to share my screen so that way you can actually see what it would look like as you attempt to take the Pearson test. So what is going to pop up at first is going to be the fact that, okay, this is what the test is called. So for instance, this is just an example, okay? Test one, you can see your particular class on there. So this may not be your particular section, um, but this is just for example references. You will see on here the timed assignment policy. This says once you start the test, then you must finish the test because even if you close out your computer, the timer is going to still keep going. So as you can see, this particular timer right here is on now 33.58. It's just going down and down and down. This started at one hour. So what I did was I started the test, I went in and I answered a question and I closed my computer out just to kind of mimic a, an, an internet failure or um, a problem with a computer dying you can go back in. Now, I do highly encourage you to make sure your computer is completely charged. You are in a very strong internet connection area. If you do have the ability to connect directly to the wall instead of using Wi-Fi, I would certainly recommend that because your internet will run faster that way. The other thing is, is before you begin this test, you will absolutely make sure that you close out every single open tab and every other open program so if you have multiple Word documents, different PowerPoints, different internet tabs open, close everything. So that way your computer can be just pretty much working on your test and not running a whole lot of background information because that will certainly slow it down. These questions are gonna come one at a time, so you don't want anything that's going to slow down your process since this is a timed exam. So you'll always have the timer on there um, as you can see here, the time will change to yellow whenever it's your final minute. So that is whenever you, of course, if you have anything left, you definitely want to make sure that you move as fast as possible during that time frame. Because once the timer is up, then there is not going to be any uh, more availability to look at any other questions, submit any additional answers, and your grade is automatically going to be submitted for what work you have completed. So make sure that you do pay attention to the timer and you are familiar with about how much time you have left based upon how many questions you have left, you really want to pay attention to those things. So let's kind of walk through this a little bit. Um, again, this timer is going to shift over to the right hand side. It'll be there, but it's going to move. So if we go through and we look at this, move this out of the way. What you can see here is I've already answered one question. Okay, so if you've answered a question, then it will give you a check mark. If you skipped it and you did not answer it, you will not get a check mark. So let's go to this one. You can see here on this particular question, if you do not know the answer, you could probably just go ahead and click next, not even look at it and try to figure it out. If you're like, I absolutely do not know, just go ahead and click next. When you click next, it will take you to the next question. Okay, this question, obviously, I have already answered. So let's say we go on to the next one. If you attempt to try to say, mm, you know what, I'm not 100% sure, but I am thinking maybe it's this one, and you are going to not submit it because that's what you have to do in order for it to record your answer. If you're like, I'm not 100% sure, I don't want to submit because I know once I do submit, I cannot go back and change my answer. I want an opportunity to look at this a, a second time around. What's going to happen if you do not click submit and you try to click next, you're going to get this pop up box and this pop up box is basically just going to be your reminder to say, hey, you didn't submit that answer for us to grade it. So you either need to go back and click submit. If you don't want to, because you want to come back to it, just click OK. Now, here's the thing. When you click OK, your answer is going to be gone from here whenever you come back to it. So don't think, oh, I'm just going to leave this as a placeholder and expect it to still be there whenever you return to the question. 
but that's not the way that it's going to work. As soon as you click this OK button saying, I want to go ahead and move forward, this is going to be erased and you will have to reread the question and go find your answer all over again. OK, so you click OK and it's going to allow you to go back to the question, but it will not be there whenever you are going to go back to it. So how do you get back? If you look right here in the left hand side, you click on the title of the test. And whenever you click on the title of the test, you can see here. See, I only answered that one question prior to the video even starting. Um, item number one, I left that blank and item number three, I left that blank. So you can go in and you can choose to go back to item number one or whichever one it is and now answer the question. So let's say that question number three that I had kind of put a little place mark in thinking that mm, I'm not 100% sure. I want a second chance to look at this. See how it's no longer there. So this is why I highly discourage you from leaving multiple questions blank because you're going to have to go in and reread them all over again and reread the answers all over again. So do not do that because you will run out of time. Obviously, every time you click the next button or every time you click the submit button, it takes the computer a little bit of time before it gives you the next question. And if you leave a lot of questions blank, you will certainly run out of time. I've seen it happen to students in the past. So you do not want to do that. You do want to try to answer as many questions as you can. Think through it on the first time around, the first time reading it, and go with your gut. Usually your gut is right. So if you're feeling like, I think that that's the answer, 90% sure that it is, just go ahead and answer it. Now, of course, like I said earlier, you cannot go back and change your answer once you have submitted an answer. So you do want to kind of keep a balance between, I know I don't know that, so I do need to go look at it again, versus questioning yourself on every other single question, because you cannot do that. You want to come prepared, study, be ready, so that whenever it's time to answer the questions, you can actually answer them, okay? And as you can see, my timer is over here. It's just counting down. You'd be really surprised at how fast that timer goes whenever you're actually working on the test itself. So that is a few things, a few tips and pointers, okay? Um, always click submit. So if you're like, I know for sure that this is the answer, always click submit. And then you will definitely be able to see that that check mark is there once you click submit. Once you have all of your questions with check marks, you will not go back to look at anything, okay? As soon as everything has a check mark, the test won't even allow you to go back in and look at any questions further after that point. So after every single um, question has been submitted, then what's gonna happen is Pearson is gonna automatically grade the test. Now, there will be a transfer of the grade from Pearson over to Canvas but do not look in Canvas until three hours have passed after you have submitted your test. Three hours, okay? Not three minutes, three hours. And the reason for that is because it takes some time to transfer over all of the grades from the Pearson website over onto the Canvas website. And it does it a little bit at a time. So even if you made a 95 on your test, if you go and look at it and it's only transferred a portion of it and it says 65, you're going to freak out. You're going to email me. I'm going to send you an email that said I told you to wait three hours. So go back and check it later on and you're going to realize the panic attack was for absolutely nothing. Okay, so don't do it. Wait, give it some time so that all of the information can be transferred over before you go in to look at your grade on Canvas. Now, that being said, during the testing process, I cannot answer any questions about any of the questions on the test. I cannot give you the definitions to any words that you do not know. I cannot tell you um, whether you are right or whether you are wrong. I cannot tell you what a question is actually asking you for. I can't help you with any technical difficulties, um, any internet issues, any computer problems. So I can't help you during the test. So again, this is why you wanna make sure you're totally prepared to take the test whenever that time does come, okay? So study up, be ready, and you'll do great, all right? Have a great day.